Today Intel launches their new generation of processors under the codename Arrow Lake. And basically today we're going to talk about, except for the processor in a separated video, we're going to talk about this motherboard from MSI. This is MAG Z890 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. And this motherboard, as you already know from the past gen, when we're talking about Tomahawk in general and MAG series in general, you already know where this motherboard should stand, right? So we're going to go into details, of course, run through the details about the motherboard, actually going with connections, uh, specifications, and of course some benchmarks, but more detailed benchmarks will be in that separated video regarding the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K. A bit strange name, isn't it? 285K. I really got used to the old names, but okay, totally relevant. And tomorrow we're going to take a look at the other processor, which will be Intel Core Ultra 5 245K, which there will be a dedicated video just for that. So yeah, really wanted to separate everything just so you don't have to watch uh, one hour, hour and a half video uh, because I think these ones will be quite long. So let's start with the Mag Z uh, 890 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. A couple of features that this motherboard has is 16 Duet Rail power system, Lightning Gen 5 PCI slot, Thunderbolt 4, Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4, Easy PCI release, and this is quite interesting, I'm going to go into details. Then we have Easy M.2 Shield uh, Frozer 2, quadruple M.2 connectors, I guess they went with quadruple just to get some interesting name when we're talking about the M.2 connectors because we already saw 4 and 5 M.2 slots, so yeah, whatever. 5G LAN and we have loads of other stuff. So it supports Intel Core Ultra processors with the LGA1851 with the Intel Z890 chipset. The first slot is PCI 5.0 16 and we have two additional slots, PCI 4.0 16 We have two Thunderbolt 4 Type-C ports that support 8K at 60Hz. When I mentioned the power system, it has actually, to be precise, 16 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 Duet Rail Power System 90 Amperes SPS. A bit of an extended uh, heatsink design. Then we have Easy OC with one click overclocking. Uh, optimized UE and UX design with uh, BIOS looking quite differently, I do have to admit. Now, regarding the old hype we had uh, around AI and Computex this year, uh, this motherboard is ready for AI PC, which means that it's designed for advanced hardware and technology. So uh, it has several categories that you can sync the applications to perform and automatically optimize them to create comfortable in my environment. So this one is called AI Engine. Then we have AI Land Manager, which optimizes networking for performance and minimize the latency. Frozer AI Cooling, which automatically adjusts the fan duty. And AI Boost, which is an MSI exclusive feature. It uh, overclocks the MPU to improve higher AI performance and the M.2 Clip 2 Remover. Now, this is really cool because the only thing that you have to do is hold the M.2 heatsink, push the top part, and just slide off the M.2 heatsink. It's really easy and basically there's nothing additionally to say. The PCI Express slot release, you have to push the button, it removes the latch, you push it back, it goes back. It's really straightforward. It depends where you're placing the GPU or removing it. But let's go to specifications because we can go through these features for quite a while. Now, it supports four DDR5U DIMMs, maximum capacity is 256 gigs, and it goes up to 9200 MHz OC, which is just uh, insane. Then for the audio, we have Realtek ALC uh, 1220p codec with 7.1 channel high definition audio, which supports SPDIF output. We have four M.2 slots. The first one is from the CPU, which supports PCI 5 uh, times 4 and it supports 2280, 2260 devices. The second one is sourced from the CPU, supports uh, PCI 4 times 4. The third slot is from the chipset, supports up to 4 times 4. And then we have the fourth slot again from the chipset, 4x4 four four, SATA mode, supports 2280, 2260, and 2242. 
and when we're talking about the storage it supports four SATA 6G devices. Now it also supports RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 10 for SATA storage devices and supports all of that for the M.2 NVMe. Also we have 5 volts, 3 amperes, 15 watts power charging. Each port can daisy chain up to 3 Thunderbolt 4 devices or 5 Thunderbolt 3 devices and it supports as already stated 8K display. Now for the connections on the motherboard, we have Thunderbolt 5 card connector. This is JTBT5 with support of RTD3. One power connector for ATX, that's 24 pin. Then we have two power connectors for the power for the CPU, that's EPS2 8 pin. And they are this time located right above the memory modules, which is interesting. Then we have one power connector, which is PCIe power 8 pin, which is located right at the bottom in the middle part of the motherboard. We have one CPU fan, one combo fan, which is pump system fan. Then we have six system fan, the four pin PWM. One is a control header, two front panel headers, one chassis intrusion, one front audio, three addressable V2 RGB LED connectors, one RGB LED connector, one TPM pin header, four USB 2.0 ports, two USB 5 gigabit per second type A ports and one USB 20 gigabit per second type C ports. Basically, when you take into consideration all the ports and all the headers, the debug LED, the digital debug LED, and everything when we're talking about the storage, insane memory speeds on the DDR5s and everything all together, including the power system, this Tomahawk is actually packed compared to others. Uh, the I.O. overview. So what we have here is, starting at the top from the bottom, we're having HDMI port, then we have Thunderbolt 4 40 gigabit per second Type-C ports, right after that USB 10 gigabit per second Type-C, and then we have three USB 10 gigabit per second Type-A ports, where one of those is circled, which means that's the Flash BIOS port. After that, we're having Flash BIOS button and Clear CMOS button, two USB 5 gigabit per second type A ports. Next in line, we have additional two USB 5 gigabit per second type A ports, five gigabit per second LAN port, Wi-Fi antenna connectors, line in, line out, and optical SPDIF out connector. Talking about the heat sinks, all four quadruple M.2 slots are covered with uh, passive heat sinks, and then we have quite nice chunk of passive heat sink on the VRM, which should be quite solid when we're talking about cooling. Now let's jump in into benchmarks. As I stated, I'm not going to go too much into details regarding the processor because that will be covered in that separated video. Now in AIDA 64 Extreme Edition Cache and Memory Benchmark, the Kingston Fury Renegade read speeds 114.5 gigabytes per second, write speed 97,288 megabytes per second, copy 102.04 gigabytes per second, and the latency is 89.3 nanoseconds. Cinebench R23 multi-score. Uh, it's interesting because it goes, the CPU goes from 76 to 77. Eventually at the last benchmark, it went up to uh, 75 maximum. And that's quite solid. I mean, compared to the past gen Intel Core processors, uh, this is a quite nice thermal I do have to admit. But then we go with multi-scores in Cinebench R23 and they all hover around 39,000 ah, from 200 to 7, 800, 900 even touching. Even though before even doing this regular benchmarks that I do for this type of video, I actually got 40,900. So it, it kind of depends. I don't know why did it go uh, this way in this benchmarks for the 10 consecutive benchmarks. And then prior to this, I had 40,900. And then for the clock speed, 54, mostly 5400 megahertz. The TDP on the processor is rated at 240. And actually I got 240 watts at maximum at some point. So yeah, that's quite uh, okay. In single thread Cinebench R23, 2288 points. Uh, multiply ratio was 16.94. Now, Indigo Benchmark Bedroom, uh, 3.341 million samples per second, while the supercar is 8.589 million samples per second. Uh, Corona 10, 12.4 million rays per second with, with CPU frequency at 4841 megahertz. 
Now, this is something interesting. So as I stated, I tested two different SSDs when we're talking about Gen 4 and Gen 5. So uh, Fury Renegade has never let me down in those terms when we're talking about speeds. But something strange happened. AS SSD read speeds for this particular SSD, 6438.48 megabytes per second read, while write was 6326 0.95 megabytes per second. Add to this benchmark read speed 6.61 gigabytes per second, while the write speed 6.42 gigabytes per second, and crystal disk marks 6622.30 megabytes per second read, while the write was 6531.88 megabytes per second. With the team group Gen 5 SSD, AS SSD started with 8550. 0.70 megabytes per second read and write was at 8429.28 megabytes per second write, which is still really low for Gen 5. Then we go with Auto Disk Benchmark. Read speeds 10.88 gigabytes per second, while the write was 8.96 gigabytes per second. Crystal Disk Mark. Read speeds 11,630.97 megabytes per second while the write speeds 9485.43 megabytes per second. Go with Corona 1.3, so the CPU went up to 77 degrees in that uh, benchmark, 209.6 watts, 45 seconds to finish up the render with 10.7 million rays per second, which unfortunately when you take into consideration and compare it to my list of what I benchmarked, it actually isn't top one. I also ran some uh, 3D Mark tests uh, with uh, CPU profile with maximum threads uh, 17,390 and 16 threads 14,502. Times Pi Extreme score was 13,380, while the CPU was 13,214. Times Pi regular uh, score was 24,840, while the CPU was 19,887. And then we have Firestrike Ultra with the score 17,518, Firestrike Extreme 29,277, and Firestrike uh, Normal 41,367. PC Mark 10 altogether score was uh, 8,892, which uh, sounds um, solid. Only solid is what I can say. Now, when we're discussing BIOS, it's really user-friendly and it's completely changed compared to the past gen. So we're having an easy mode and advanced mode, of course. In advanced mode, we have a couple of, let's say, additional tabs where you could access system status, advanced overclocking, security, boot. And in advanced mode, we have PCI subsystem settings, uh, ACPI settings, integrated peripherals, integrated graphic configuration, Thunderbolt configuration. USB as well, configuration, power management, setup, wake up, event setup, click BIOS configuration, secure erase plus MSI driver utility installer. And then we go to easy mode. Now here is the interesting part. You don't even have to go to the advanced mode because everything is really straightforward here. So we have CPU game boost, which you can just turn it on or off. Then we have the MPU AI boost, which you can enable or disable. And of course, choose memory profiles, which is really straightforward here. In the information, you have the motherboard BIOS version, BIOS build date, and system temperature. After that, you have the easy configuration where you could choose the MSI performance present, a memory try it, MSI driver utility installer, and default home page. Now, all in all, when we're talking about performance in general of this motherboard, basically, it depends on the processor. But uh, all in all, when we're talking about this, it's a new platform and it uh, hasn't been uh, properly, not properly done in those terms. I would just say it needs some tweaking, like BIOS updates, configurations, uh, Intel software, new updated and stuff like that, where we will get not more stability because everything was stable when we we're talking about benchmarks in general. But I'm talking about more like you don't get full speeds of Gen 4 SSD, unfortunately, for some strange reason, because Gen 5 did work properly, so there's that. Then we have some other scores, which basically don't go into consideration when we're talking about the motherboard. They go more towards the processor. The visual aspect, the motherboard looks really good, and I can't deny anything regardless of that. It's either you love it or you don't. It's up to personal preferences. 
But the cool thing uh, for the motherboard and its functions, one second overclocking, basically you just go to BIOS and you have that game boost option. Then we have those one click, uh, what I stated, uh, for removing the top and the bottom uh, M.2 shields uh, and for releasing and locking in the GPU, which is quite incredible. I don't know why anybody didn't think of that sooner. I mean, okay for the M.2, but I'm talking specifically for the PCI Express lock. And finally, let's not forget for you RGB lovers or uh, single color lovers, however you want to call it, uh, whatever you like with the lightning to do to your PC. It also supports MSI Dragon Center where you can uh, actually access additional stuff when we're talking about some uh, specific, um, let's say, settings for networking or whatever you decide to go with, a uh, game mode as well or anything similar to that. But there's also Mystic Lights, MSI Mystic Lights. This was the video just specifically for the uh, MSI MAG Z890 Tomahawk Wi-Fi, which basically I just wanted to somewhat give you, um, let's say, a certain numbers with this processor and give you more information about the motherboard in general, what it has. Uh, some features and some specs. So, yeah, guys, uh, if you're aiming for something like that with the new generation or this was something that interested you, of course, as per usual and in any other video, I'll place the links for uh, this combination if this uh, suits you for any reason. Uh, that's it. And if you want to see this build in general, built with the RTX 4080 Super Gaming X Slim and the MSI MAG Z890 uh, Tomahawk Wi Fi, including the uh, Intel Core Ultra 9 285K processor, you can check out at the end of this video. Until then, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell. I'll see you quite soon. Bye.